Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to Off The Beaten Coast. Uh, today we're out on one of these beautiful little islands in Moreton Bay. Um, Josh and I just took the boat out. Uh, a brand new boat, I might add. <laughs> Something I'm very excited about. Um, yeah, so we went for a dive this morning um, and absolutely cleaned up. I got three cod, tusk fish, a couple of sweet lip and it was such a good dive. Have a look. It's I saw the biggest turtle I've ever seen in my entire life. It would have to have been the size of a car. I was just snorkeling along and I went right over the top of it. It sort of caught me off guard. And I looked down, it scared the shit out of me because it was just so big. Like, I can't even begin to explain how big it was. I have worked on Great Barrier Reef Islands where turtles come to nest and they're big turtles up there, like 150 years old. This one put those to shame. It's this massive big green sea turtle. Um, you know, I, I sort of spooked it a little bit and it came around and put back at me and then ended up just taking off, but it was absolutely huge. I 
also stumbled across these incredible pineapple fish. I always thought that these pineapple fish were like, uh, they live sort of out in the deep reef in the really dark water. Um, but yeah, I was snorkeling like three meters of water, two meters of water even. And yeah, there was a heap of them there. And I was just, honestly, I was so surprised. I've never seen them uh, in the wild before, only in aquariums. And uh, yeah, it was, they were pretty, pretty cool. They look exactly like a pineapple. Lunch time now. Um, the sort of winds dropped off heaps and it's gone like quite glassy, so it'd be nice to stay out here. But I've got a few things to do at home this afternoon, and I've pretty much got plenty of fish. I got as much fish as I need, so um, we're gonna head home, maybe do a little fish on the way home, and um, yeah, maybe this afternoon I'll go down the beach for a cook up or tomorrow afternoon um, and maybe cook up the sweet lip or this little tusk fish that I caught and uh, make something super delicious. So we're back at my house now, we had an awesome day on the water. Um, we were only out there for a couple of hours, but we got heaps of fish. We got uh, estuary cod, two gold spot cod, a couple of sweet lip, big tusk fish, and um, some beautiful sand crabs as well. Uh, they're going to cook up beautifully. But what I want to focus on today's episode is this fish here. This is called a gold spot sweet lip, or uh, more colloquially known as the Morwong. Um, this is a big target fish for uh, spear fishermen that are starting out because the fish is really easy to shoot. As soon as you're in the water, they sort of pretty much just come to you um, and you can shoot them point blank. It's, they're really, really easy fish. However, they don't have the best reputation for tasting great. Um, a lot of old fishermen and, uh, you know, the classic spear will tell you that uh, this is a shit eating fish. However, if you cook it right uh, and if you cook it properly, uh, that will not be a problem at all and it will taste absolutely delicious. So. Uh, I'm going to fill this guy up and we're going to, I'm not sure what to do with it yet, maybe we'll put it into a curry, um, maybe put it on the barbecue, um, but we're going to make this taste absolutely delicious and it's going to be so good. Right, for those of you who don't know how to fillet a fish, it's really, really easy. It can be quite daunting to people just to see a whole fish in a shop or in a fish market or even if they catch them um, and not know how to, to process it, take the fillets off. If you're buying fish at the fish market or in the supermarket, it's so much cheaper to bite whole and you get use of the whole fish. You get the wings, you get the cheek, you can turn the bones and the head into soup. And of course you get the beautiful fillets and even you can crisp out the skin as well. There's so much you can do. All right, to start, what we have to do is get our fish on his side there. We're gonna get our knife and go right behind the pectoral fin and up to the head. So this is sort of where he is. The head skeleton starts and then he's got a gill plate here. So. We're going to run right in there. Get behind those scales if you can. And down. And then we're going to go right into that cut where we cut there. And just gently run our knife. He's got very tough scales, these fish. Down the spine, all the way down to the tail. And so at this point here, I'm just going to do very gentle strokes right along the side of the skeleton and then I can start opening it up there and you can see these big long cuts. Just pop his ribs there and now at this point I've got enough of his fillet cut out so I'm going to get my knife, 
feeling right along the side of the skeleton there and popping it out the tail so his fillet's starting to come off there now at this point I'm just going to gently prise the meat away from the spine break through his ribs right over the top and there we have beautiful clean fillet there's plenty of meat on that and uh, we haven't left really anything here on the skeleton at all maybe a little bit there but also what we can do at this point is I've gutted him gutted him on the water because it makes it a bit easier for cleaning up and we can take this collar here off pick up his lower pectoral fin straight in there and now our collar is separated from the body so we just got to break that little bone there give it a twist and then that's ready to go so all we have to do um, all we have to do is just scale that and then we can marinate it and put it on the barbecue so put that aside for the moment got a fillet here now all we have to do is take the skin off so I'm going to use I'm not going to use my little boning knife here this is a small this is a boning and filleting knife um, it's got a really sort of rigid blade on there but I want to use a longer one so I get a nice um, even stroke so to take the skin off just put my knife right there at the tail holding onto the tail and then gently pick up the tail and run the skin back and forwards over the blade and that is our fillet all we have to do is just take out these um, these couple of bones here so I, I just run my finger right over the middle of the fillet find the last one which is about there and run right down the side I think there's a rib in there take that out too so yeah just feeling those bones running knife right up the side of the bones and you can see you can see if we have a look at that piece there you can see the bones that are running from the top of the field to the bottom just cut down and we have a beautifully prepared fillet um, no bones in there and skins off as well so this can now be turned into a beautiful curry we can marinate it we can smoke it um, we can put it straight on the barbie as well put a beautiful sauce over the top and that i promise you is going to taste absolutely delicious so a bit of a change of plans um, just finished filleting the fish in the backyard here and I've got this little smoker what we're gonna do is set up the smoker in the backyard I'm gonna get it full of sticks I've got some gum leaves and some melaleuca leaves as well um, I'm gonna get uh, some of the fish and some of the fish collars chuck them in there and um, cook them up in the smoker so I've got my fire ready I've got plenty of eucalyptus bit of paper bark there to light that up Now, I'll get that nice and hot, I'll get that burnt down a little bit, those logs, uh, till they're sort of just collie. And then I've got, um, I've got a bit of melaleuca here, I've got a bit of eucalyptus as well. Um, I've got some eucalyptus bark, which will be really, um, really good because it's, they really smell beautiful. Um, so I'm going to use that as my smoking medium instead of like smoking chips and stuff. Um, and then we're going to get our fish in there, cook it up. Alright, so got my fire going, it's going along nicely. I've got all my leaves on bark, my eucalyptus, and out here, this is where it gets interesting. And so a good buddy of mine has sent me this incredible chili sauce. Um, it is divine, I put on absolutely everything. So I'm gonna coat these uh, sweet lip fillets. I'm just gonna get a nice little sort of coating on there before I put them into the smoker. So it's gonna add some heat, it's gonna add some sweetness from the chilies, and um, it's gonna be absolutely to die for. If you want to check out his sources, his name is The Bald Chef on Instagram. 
is so so good he also does spice rubs and um, stuff like that as well for meats uh, and they're absolutely delicious i'm just going to check on my fly now all right so my coals are nice and hot i've got my little garden there next i'm going to chuck in some of these um, melaleuca leaves just right on top they're green ones too as well which will um smoke up really nicely a couple of different types of melaleuca in there and also some eucalyptus as well they're probably not going to catch fire i'm actually gonna oh, get this piece of paper bark here i'm gonna get a piece of paper bark put it over the top and that's going to sort of like snuff the flame to make it nice and smoky as you can see then i put my little rack on top there and then next is my beautiful fish in there now look at that it's gonna be so good and the residual heat from the coals the residual heat from the coals is going to um, cook the fish as well as impart a heap of really beautiful smoky flavor so my smoke is absolutely pumping now shut the lid on and I'm just gonna leave that open a little bit I don't want too much smoke to escape but I also don't want too much heat to escape as well. So that's going to sit in there for about another probably 15 minutes or so. And then I'm going to check on it. And um, yeah, it should be beautiful. Right, the smoke has been going for about 10, 15 minutes now. There's plenty of heat in there. And big reveal. Look at that. That looks absolutely divine. Let me just check that's cooked. And look, have a look at this. I'm just get my stick here. Open that up a little bit absolutely perfectly cooked now this is an absolutely fantastic thing that you can do with sweet lip or any other fish that maybe isn't regarded as a higher class table fish um, this is absolutely divine and it's going to work really really well so um, i'm going to take this off here i'm not sure how i'm going to get it off yet look at that just flaky as Look at that, that is going to be absolutely delicious. We're going to have this with some roasted potatoes, um, some veggies as well. And it just doesn't get much better. Look at that. So we better try it. That's so good. Heat from the chili, smokiness from all the native, uh, native leaves. It's just perfect. You don't get any of that fishy taste. You really can't taste the fish at all to be honest it's fantastic right that's it for this episode um, if you are a new Spiro even or old Spiro and you come across some Wong actually you can catch them on the line as well so if you find yourself uh, catching some more Wong or sweet lip as they're technically called Give it a go this is absolutely delicious and you're not going to get any of that shocking flavor just make sure when you catch a fish you uh, of course kill it and bleed it straight away because that's going to make a massive massive difference and straight on ice so we're going to go enjoy this for dinner and we're going to have some potatoes and veggies with it and uh yeah see you in the next episode if you guys want to see more from me uh don't forget to jump over to my instagram at hasfoss and also follow along on off the beaten coast um, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new here and of course ring the bell um, and like the video as well liking the videos helps uh, helps us creators out because it uh, sort of gets the word out there gets the videos out there and gets them in front of people so um, enjoy the videos enjoy the content and we'll see you soon